Hi, welcome to First Chapter Friday. My name is Lucy and I am really excited today to share with you the first chapter of the book called Zenobia July by Lisa Bunker. And this is a middle grade book about a girl named Zenobia July. Uh, she goes by Zen. Zenobia is um, a middle schooler starting at a new school in Maine. She used to live in Arizona with her mother and father. Um, both of whom have died before the story starts. And so she moves to Maine to live with her Aunt Lucy and her Aunt Phil. And Zenobia is going to school for the first time as a girl. She's a trans girl. And um, so she is, because she got out of her old life, she's starting over and being able to live as who she is. But um, this comes with a set of challenges and she's sort of having to navigate this new world um, and figure out where she can get guidance from. So this book is full of really great characters, including Zenobia. Um, she makes a group of friends who call themselves uh, the Orphan Misfits. And the leader of this Orphan Misfits is a person named Arlie, who is gender nonconforming. And um, there's a new kid in there as well named Elijah. There's a um, Congolese immigrant in this group named Chantel. So that's sort of her, her band of friends. And then her aunts have another really wonderful group of friends. It's a very inclusive book as far as who is um, presented in this story. And I think that... Um, Lisa Bunker does a really good job of keeping all of the spaces in her book inclusive. And um, she's really trying to write a story of how other people can do that and how to make schools that are bully free. Um, in an interview with the author, Lisa Bunker, she said, as an out trans author of LGBTQIA+, themed middle grade titles. She thinks she's positioned to put her own inflection on the topic. And I think she does a wonderful job of that, um, of just the day-to-day -day life that Zenobia is, is living um, now as a girl for the first time. And um, she's, Lisa Bunker, the author, said she has certain goals when she writes books and she wants all kids to have the chance to read realistic human characters that feel like themselves. And I think she does definitely meets that goal with this book. Um, she also wants to entice other readers to read about their rainbow peers. And she wants to depict the nurturing power of the LGBTQIA plus community. And um, one place where she does that really well in this book is with, with the friends of the two aunts that Zenobia lives with. So this is a great book about sort of finding a family and building a community that supports you no matter who you are. And I really like that aspect of it. But it is also a mystery. It's a cyber mystery. Uh, Zenobia is big into coding and um, a computer has been hacked at school and hateful messages are being sent and she um, can use her skills to sort of get to the bottom of this. So uh, she's very multidimensional and um, she's just a great character. So this is the first chapter of Zenobia July by Lisa Bunker. One, she had that new kid look. Anyone paying attention could have seen it. In the flinchiness of her shoulders, in the way her eyes skittered from face to face as the other students streamed past, managed to show up, her shoulders and eyes said, but not sure about having the nerve to actually go in. Might be too much today. Not that anyone was paying attention. First day of school at Monarch Middle, everyone was scoping for friends, shouting, hey, clustering up. It was a hot morning. It felt like summer, swearing it was going to stick around this year. No, really. The wind moving through the high branches of the trees made wavering leaf shadows. The new kid was wearing a blue dress that was too big for her. Sneakers with white socks pushed down and a heavy looking backpack. Her jumbled mop flop of hair made her face look smaller and her eyes look bigger. The tiny metal balls that ear piercers 
put in newly pierced ears glinted in her lobes. She hovered behind a pillar at the far end of the entrance, away from the crush. Fewer students now, mostly single ones, hurrying to beat the bell. Each time the metal and glass doors swung shut, a mirror image of the sidewalk clunked back into place, and each time the new kid's eyes shifted toward it. She looked like she might be asking her reflection to tell her that everything was going to be all right. But then her eyes always went down again, like maybe her reflection had shaken its head. Now a minute with no one using the leftmost door. This time her eyes stared. She stared at her mirror image. She, tur she turned first to one side, then the other. She swished her dress. A furtive glance around and then an awkward pirouette. As she finished the spin, a truck passed behind her, turning the reflection background dark and transparent, and she screened her face with her hands and cringed away. Someone was watching her through the glass. The door opened and the watcher came out, another student. What you might notice first, if you were a detailed person, the sharp edged exact haircut with a part, the stocky square body shape, the jeans rolled up to mid calf, revealing mismatched socks, the button down shirt and boots, the big black glasses. Or if you were more the general impression type, you might notice that this person seemed equally balanced between looking like a girl and looking like a boy. The watcher approached cautiously, stopped a few steps away. Hey, you okay? No answer. Um, I haven't seen you before. Are you new? Still no answer, just an eyes wide look. But then one quick nod. Oh, okay. Silence. Um, so you want to come inside? School's about to start. The new kid curled sideways like she was trying to disappear into herself. The bell rang, her body jerked. You don't say much. Not mean, just saying. The skin around those big eyes got wrinkles in it. I can talk. Just above a whisper, but clear enough. Cool. You can dance too. Looked good. Nice moves. The new kid's fingers twisted together. So, person who can talk and dance, do you also have a name? Again, the new kid tried to curl disappear. So hard she stumbled back around. After a couple of seconds, though, her head came up and her spine got straight again and she turned back. My name is Zenobia. A little gasp after, like it had taken all her strength to say. What? No way. How do you spell that? Zenobia spelled her name. And what's your last name? The question was eager, almost hard, but it came out with a light in the eyes. Some kind of geeky glee happening there. My last name? Yeah. Silence. Then July. An actual whisper this time. Like the month? Yes. My name is Zenobia July. Another gasp. A sudden laugh. Geeky glee stronger now, beaming out. That's totally excellent. 11 letters and no repeats. Zen's eyes went up and left. For a second, picturing alphabet, she forgot to look scared. You're right, she said. I never noticed. That's the closest anyone has come in a long time to matching me. But you didn't, not quite. I got 13. 13 letters? Uh-huh with no repeats? Yeah. Zen waited, then asked, sounding just a little annoyed. Okay then, so what's your name? Arlie. People call me. A-R-L-I. That's only four letters. No, duh. So what's your full name? Yeah, you know what? I'm already late for class. Find me at lunch and ask me again then. You coming in? Zen's eyes did another circuit. School entrance, down at herself, then up again to Arlie's face. For the first time, a touch of a smile. Yeah, okay, I guess I can. Thanks. They went in together through the mirrored door. And that is the end of chapter one. So that is Zen's first day at school and her first meeting with Arlie, who is the leader of the Misfit Orphans. So... I hope that you give Zenobia July a try. It is filled with great characters. There's a little bit of mystery in it. Um, Lisa Bunker has a very approachable 
way of writing. You just feel like you're right there with the characters in her story. So give Zenobia July a try.